Hi everybody, welcome back. My name is Lynn and I'm Pretty Paper Craft 67. And today I'm just going to make some really, really simple policy envelopes. Um, I'm going to be using just ordinary cardstock and an embossing folder from Tim Holtz and some Distress Ink and then, uh, yeah, we'll do some decorating on this one. So I've got um, some made in varying stages. So this one is complete. So it's just your standard, ordinary policy envelope. Simple, easy. But I've used this new Distress, um, sorry, embossing folder. It's one of those 3D texture fades one from Tim Holtz. And this one is called Numbered. So I really love this. I've just, I just received it the other day. All right, so to make a policy envelope, really, really easy. Um, I've got some measurements put aside here for my template. So all I'm going to do is take a piece of cardstock. Now this is, an, uh, I made a mistake when I bought my cardstock, and this is American letter size, but an A4 sheet of cardstock will be fine. And this one is not really thick. It's thicker than paper, but not thick as some cardstocks. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's probably better because it can fold easier. So all I'm going to do for my um, policy envelope is my piece of cardstock. I want it to be nine and a half inches wide or long and eight inches wide. So I'm just going to cut that down at nine and a half inches wide. My cut is a bit dodgy. And eight inches wide so just like that just like that all right and that's all the cutting we're going to going to do and then i'm using my scoreboard and i'm going to just score now again along the nine and a half inch side i am going to be scoring it at two and a quarter inches just like that, and then I'm coming over to six and a quarter inches. And then I'm going to turn it to my eight inch side, and I'm scoring that at one inch and at seven inches. One inch and seven inches. So easy as that. One piece of cardstock measuring nine, nine and a half by eight. Yep, nine and a half inches by eight. On the nine and a half inch side, I'm scoring at two and a quarter and six and a quarter. I'm going to turn it to my eight inch side and measure, um, score rather, one inch and seven inches. I'll put those measurements down below. And that is simply that for our cutting and our, our scoring. So next I'm just going to give these score marks a bit of a burnish. Just like that. And just like that. Now you're going to see that you've got, there's four corners. Each corner's got these little, little sections here. And we're going to cut those away. And I'm just going to slightly mitre down this side and I'm going to cut the oh, um, under the score line, if that makes sense. So under the score line, that's a bit hard to see. And then just mitre, mitre that little bit of a cutaway part there. And we'll do that all the way around. And just cut below that score line like that just like that and then mitre this little bit, bit there just like that and that is pretty much our policy envelope so it will shut like that and shut like that that bottom flap will come up and this bottom flap will go over. Now, if you feel a little bit of resistance there, all that you need to do is come back to that section and just 
mitre that edge down just a bit. That's about an eighth of an inch that I'm cutting off there. And then that will just help for it to close over really nicely. All right, so that's the basic policy envelope shape. And now I'm just going to emboss it with this folder. So um, I've just got my embossing machine and the folder set up here. Now I've got to go cut emboss, um, but any, any embossing machine will do. And I'm just going to fold it up uh, like that, like that, like that. Now, and I'm going to run it through this embossing machine. Now, I'm sorry if that's not completely on camera. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to wet just a really light spray of my cardstock. Because these embossing folders are so thick, they do tend or they can crack your cardstock. So I'm just going to just give it a fine mist of water, just like that, just a little bit. And I'm going to put that inside my embossing folder. Just position it really well, close it down. And then I'm just using my base plate and one of the cutting plates, just because it's such a thick folder. And then I'm just going to run that through. It does take a bit because it's such a thick folder, just like that. Right, so I'll put that away. But the results are beautiful. Look at that. Now I've just got to find where does it open. It will really compress down. So be very, very careful when you're opening it. Oh, geez, this one's kind of stuck. There we go. And again, the top. Oh, this one might. Oh, no, no, no. And there we go. So just be really careful when you're opening it. And there you have it. And look at that. Isn't that's beautiful? Just did white. I love it in white. But then I have gone ahead and I've distress inked this one and I love this it's so very grungy it's beautiful so we're going to do that again because these will make a nice set I'll just put this away and I'm just going to put up bring up my scoreboard just to give this a little somewhere to live while I ink it and I'm just simply all I'm going to do um, I'm going to grab a big acrylic block and I've just got some um, Distress Oxide Spray in Gathered Twig. And I've got just the Re-Inker in Gathered Twig as well in the Distress Ink. So there's two same ink colours, family. But they just come up really differently when they're sprayed together and, and just, you know, applied to the paper. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this. And I hope I'm in camera. Some of this and I'm just going to dot it onto my acrylic stamp block. Just like that. And I'm going to take my just ordinary ink, distress ink, and again just dot it around like that. I'm just going to move some of this out of the way because I don't want the water to spray. And then I'm just going to really give that a good amount of water. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit more of this in there just to give it that bit more darkness. And then I'm going to spray this with water. And I'm giving it a good amount of water. And then all I'm going to do is pick up my block and it will be messy. And I'm just going to straight put it straight down and I'm just moving it all around. Picking up some more ink and bringing it over here. Just like this sort of thing. Just moving that ink around and, and just getting it everywhere. And then you can also, it's pulled a little bit in this corner, so I'm just going to let that run. All the way down. And I'm going to spray just water randomly around it. A bit more water on my block. And you just play with it, just um, 
until you're happy with the results until i'm just going until most of the white edges are covered or white surfaces i should say are covered and i'm just using i'm using the ink that's lying on the surface and i'm just moving it around and we'll let this run down a little bit give that a little bit more water and just let it run all right give it that last run and then i am basically just going to let that dry i do have a um a heat gun but it is still packed in a box from when i moved and i haven't found it yet so i'm just going to let that dry naturally i put it outside i've got a really nice spot in the sun outside so that's what i will do so i'll just grab a bit of old paper towel wipe up my block i get ink everywhere but i don't mind that all right so that is the the way that i make a policy envelope and i ink dye it so many different ideas for ink dyeing. There are many, many, many talented creators that can ink dye really well. Um, but, yeah, I, I just I love this embossing folder and, and adding some colour just really brings out those, those numbers. So I'm just going to put this away for a minute to dry. All right. So now this is... I've done two, as I said, I've completed one, and then this is the second one that I did. So I have, I've scored it, as I showed you, I've, I've cut it, I've scored it, I've folded it, embossed it, and inked it. So now, um, what I would normally do, now this one here, I have sewn all around the edge of the envelope, and I have sewn around that little that little flap there and I've stuck it together so that is an option you can do your sewing or if you didn't want to do sewing you could simply just put it all together just like that now on this section here I've, I've also um, did when I was testing the embossing folder I just did it on a scrap piece and I have just backed that flap with the scrap piece so I'm going to do the same again now that flap measures an inch, so I'm just going to cut a piece of this uh, scrap at an inch. Just like that. And then I'm simply just going to, I've got to decide my up and down. Now that's the top, I think, because of the way up that fall represents to me the top. So this is the top here, the top flap. So I'm just going to glue that down on there. And how is everybody today? Saturday. Finally, I'm back home. Finally, we have pretty much finished mum's house. So I'm back home now for a, a good week or so before I have to go up and do a little bit more... Um, few more things up there but yeah the actual hard work is all done and so yeah I'm really I'm so thrilled to be back into my craft room I've got to tell you all right so I'm just going to stick that down and then I'm simply just going to cut away those edges like that And cut away that one there. All right, now I will go around and give this a little bit of ink just to cover up those white edges and to just grunge it up a little bit further. And inking is optional. It's not something you have to do at all. And with this much ink, you really wouldn't have to. But it's just something I like to do. And I'll just ink inside on this flap. 
and then just down these sections here. Just like that. Now, because I do want to do the sewing elements on this one, I'm not going to stick it down at this stage, but I just will close it up and just um, keep it all together with a safety, um, not a safety pin, a bulldog clip. So there you go. So that's how easy it is to make a policy envelope. So now what I might do, I've got this one here, which I want to complete the sewing, but we'll work on decorating this one. Well, actually, no, we won't. We'll, we will work on um, putting our two, I don't know what they're called, the two um, enclo not enclosures, but closures. So all I'm going to do for that is I'm going to grab a stamp. Um, and this is just a random stamp. It's just a um, like a stamp seal stamp. And I'm going to just pick, now I did have a piece of card, here it is. I'm just going to randomly stamp two of these images onto this piece of cardstock or patterned paper. I'm going to use black ink. And I'm just going to do one there. And one there. Just like that. And I am going to grab just the off cut of our cardstock. I'm going to fold that in half and glue those two halves together because I want to create just some um, thickness in cardboard for these little closures. I'm just going to do that, simply do that. And I'll take these two seals. And I'm just going to stick them down onto this. Like that and that. And then give that a minute to dry. And then I will cut out those circles. And I have attached these again. I will attach this one to this envelope that we're working on. Um, well, I could actually close that middle section up and attach that, but I do want to machine sew my flaps. So let's do that. We will close this up. <coughs> Pardon me. We will close this up. So I don't know, about an inch. It's, it's a little bit over, probably overlapping a little bit more than an inch, but if we glue an inch, it should be good. So glue down like that. And then that one I will sew and then glue that completely down onto my envelope. But this one here, I'll again I will sew, but that's your opening. So with these circles, I'll cut one. They're still quite wet, but we'll cut one out. And I apologize for going quiet. I just always go quiet when I fussy cut and that's one and two Okay, I'm going to give them some ink. Okay, so one of these seals will sit there, and I'm sort of going to do them in this in the line that goes down where the two folds join or will overlap. And then the second one, so this one will go there, and this one will go about there. But what I am also going to do, I'm going to set an eyelet in them just as that metal, just for that metal element and to sort of give them that vintagey look. And I've got some sort of gunmetal grey 
uh, eyelets that uh, Sue from Paper Inspiration sent me. So they work the, they, they work really nice with these colours. All right, so I will grab my hole punch and I'm going to use the larger hole. And I'm simply going to go just right in the middle there and I'm going to just punch my hole and set my eyelet. Now I'm only doing it this way for this one because my eyelet setter and hole punch won't reach from there down to here where I want it. So, but this one here, when I do this one, I will actually hole punch and attach my eyelet completely through that flap but I can't do that until I have sewn because the sewing machine it's just a bit larger than the flap so the sewing machine won't let me sort of get past it so but that's okay because we can stick this one down first now I want to um, have enough glue to hold it in place but I also want a section of it to remain lifted if that makes sense because when we thread our uh, string it's got to be able to sit underneath it for the policy closure hold the string hold that there how that sort of sits underneath so I'm just going to put this one down about there and then that will take a little bit to dry and then this one will go there line it up a little better and I will punch my eyelet through there once I have sewn the flaps. All right, so I'm just going to pop this one off to the side now. And we will do some decorating on this one. So again, I love how this has turned out. That's a really, really nice embossing folder. So again, that embossing folder is, it's the Sizzix Tim Holtz 3D Texture Fades. And this one is called Numbered. Beautiful. All right, so I'm just I've just pulled a few elements from um, different um, Tim Holtz um, ephemera packs, and I've got um, like an old letter or uh, like an invoice of some description. I'm just going to do some really rough layering up here. As I said, I have machine stitched all around this one. Um, and I've machine stitched those two flaps as well. So I'm going to, all I'm just going to do is do some layering. I'm going to put the card down there like that. And this was from the layering layers kit. Uh, let me find it. So this one here is just called layers, 65 pieces. And this is urban, urban, sorry, layers and it's urban uh, ideology. Love it. And so in that was this like ledger piece or, or invoice of some sort and this old telephone dial. I remember those when uh, my grandmother used to have a telephone like that. I've got some rust dyed napkin and cheesecloth that I thought I might just sort of put there. And this is from the same uh, ephemera pack, just a big number five. And I've just machine stitched all really messy around there. And I kind of like that there. And then I've just made some um, book page, I don't even know what you call these things. I've just wrapped some book page around a skewer and pulled it out to make these sort of paper tubes. And I think I'm just, just for something really different, give them that real D 3D look. I'm going to put those there and then I'm going to put my little two little boys on the top of that. I love that. Isn't that cool? So... Let's just get sticking. So we'll take all of this away and we're just going to stick this one down first, this base piece. And put that in there. And I didn't put any cheesecloth or anything behind it because I really want those numbers in the embossing folder to sort of really shine through. So we've got that one there. Then we're going to take the telephone and I'm just going to sort of off center that a little bit like that. Just like that sort of thing. And I'm not sticking them all down completely. I'm kind of wanting that area where it looks like it's floating, lifting off the page. All right. And I'm just going to again grab my rust dyed napkin. So this is just ordinary paper towel. 
and um, I've just put it through some rust dyeing. So I'm going to put that one down there like that. And just lay that down any old place. And a bit of cheesecloth on the top of that. Just enough glue to tack it because cheesecloth cloth doesn't need too much. And then I've got this number five and, and no, for no reason, no rhyme or reason do I pick a number five. I just liked it. And again, I've just done some machine stitching around it. Bit of glue to hold it in place. And again, I'm just sort of going to lie that, lay it down like a bit, you know, how you go on, a bit crooked. And then we're just going to take these paper tubes and I am just putting a little bit of glue on the underside. And I've, they are slightly different um, heights. So I'm just going to lay them down just like that. And just one after the other, just like that, keeping them as close together as I can. Put that one there, just like that. And then our little people, we're just going to sort of put there like that. So it's really, really 3D effect. And you've got some layering happening. Just like that. And there you go. That's nice and 3D. Lots of depth. A little bit of fibre. And just, um, yeah, interesting. And then you've got your policy envelope where you can put a little note card in there or another tag, a journal card. Um, yeah, just a pocket in an envelope if you didn't want to use it as, a, as an envelope. Pocket in an envelope. Pocket in a journal. Yeah, just some really, just simple, easy and fun. And uh, I have tried this technique with other embossing folders and it looks just as good. So, or you don't have to emboss at all. You could do this with beautiful patterned scrapbook paper. That would look lovely as well. And just um, coordinate your um, enclosures to match your paper. So, yeah, sky's the limit. But because I'm sort of doing a bit of Tim Holtz at the moment, I just wanted that influence. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've found this um, project useful and, yeah, create some policy envelopes. Very easy. I will put the um, measurements and the score marks and all that down below in the description box if you want to have a go. All right, everyone, thanks so much for joining me today. Please stay safe and well, and I'll see you all again soon. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.